665 Canadians died. In the Second World War, 46,988. In the Korean War, 516. In the war in Afghanistan, 157 Canadians died. And in peacekeeping missions, 100. 21 Canadians have died. We remember them. We remember the merchant marines who ferried essential goods back and forth between North America and Europe in the wars. We remember every person who was bereaved or injured emotionally or physically give thanks for their dedication and their service. We remember those who continue to serve today, and we pray God's blessing and health and strength for all those in active service. I know there are many here who have relatives who serve in the Canadian Armed Forces. I know we have at least one active member of is here with us today up in the balcony, Scott Hansa, and uh, Barbara Cliff are not too proud of you. <laughs> Welcome. God bless you, Scott. We make the mistake sometimes when we go to war, or when we remember a war, that we think we fought against another nation, or against another Sometimes we say we beat them. We look at the Second World War and we think we were fighting against a certain nation, but that is only what exists on the surface. When we go to war, we are not simply fighting a human war of one nation against another. We are almost always fighting a much deeper war. A war against an ancient evil, a deep, old evil that lives in the hearts of humankind. And on occasion gains such a foothold in the hearts of humanity that it causes humanity to rise up in the madness of war and seek to destroy other human beings. It is an ancient, deep, against which we always need to be vigilant because it is alive today, simmering and festering in the heart of every human being. We need to watch for it. It sneaks up slowly and silently, but before we know what's happening, it has us in its grasp, and that ancient evil causes us to do the unimaginable. We read from the prophet Haggai today. Haggai lived in the shadow of such an ancient evil in the year 597. The nation of Babylon decided that its people and its culture were superior to all others and that it should therefore annex all other nations and assimilate all other cultures, languages, religions, ethnicities. People of Israel were exiled for 60 years. They returned at the time when Darius the Mede conquered Nabopolassar the Babylonian. Cyrus strangely sent all the exiles home. They returned, the people forgot one thing. They came back and they rebuilt their own homes, glorious proportion, but the temple of God lay in ruins in the middle of Jerusalem for 17 years until Haggai said to the people, why do you rebuild your own homes while God's temple is in ruins? The ancient evil 
people lived in the hearts of the Egyptian pharaohs in 1500 BC and when they enslaved at least one other nation. The ancient evil that lived in the Assyrians from 1300 to 1000 BC when they felt that they ought to assimilate the whole world next in line with the Babylonians of whom I have already spoken. Then the ancient evil that lived in the Greek Empire from 600 to 200 BC and then it lived in the Roman Empire from 300 BC to 400 AD. The ancient evil that is always present and quiet, waiting for an opportunity, lived again in the year 1919, an idealistic young man joined the German Nationalist Socialist Party quickly rose through its ranks until in the year 1933 he was elected Chancellor of the National Party or the Nazi now or the Nazi Party.
intellectual level, physical health or strength. All are equal. All are precious. All are eternally significant in my sight. The deep, deep ancient power which made this universe and made each one of us and knows each one of us the power that treasures every human being equally has been manifest throughout the ages here and there that we may know it. 1500 BC when the ancient evil was manifest in the Egyptians, the older, deeper power was manifest in a burning bush and in the heart of a man called Moses. <laughs> 